Marvel wants a shorty. No, not that kind of shorty. A shorty award honors producers of short, real-time content, which is a fancy way of saying Twitter feeds. And the cool thing about the shorty awards is that you get to decide who wins. Just go to shortyawards.com slash Marvel for the 411 and to nominate Marvel via your own Twitter feed. Save the day and be a hero. Speaking of heroes, they went through a record storm this year and thankfully came out on top. And while of course all heroes are wonderful people and it's not a contest, that didn't stop us from making our own top 10 list of heroes in 2010. Here we go. Number 10 is Iron Man. While most businessmen focused only on themselves and their bottom line this year, Tony Stark continued to serve his fellow man and Stark is 100% hero. As Iron Man, he helped to defeat Norman Osborn and reform the Avengers, and as Tony Stark, he formed the new company Stark Resilient to focus on manufacturing alternative energy. And to think in the real world we were stuck with Tony Hayward. Number nine is Luke Cage, who like most stars that find success later in life, keeps it real. And it's his straight shooting that makes him the heart of the new Avengers and the moral compass of the Thunderbolts, the two teams that he now leads. On top of that, Cage's justice is blind, as this year he took down The Hood and Matt Murdock. Nicholas Cage didn't name himself after Luke for nothing. Number eight is Thor, who single-handedly held off the Dark Avengers for a little bit and also killed the Sentry. Not only is that an impressive display of power, but based on the anti-Sentry comments on YouTube, made him an instant hero to about half of Marvel's readership. Number seven is the Hulk, and I do mean the Hulk, as he sacrificed his normal life as Bruce Banner to stop the Intelligentsia. Although, one has to wonder how much of a sacrifice that really was, considering the state of Banner's family life. His former father-in-law and ex-wife came back for revenge as the Red Hulks, and he almost killed one of his sons who was trying to destroy the Earth in the name of daddy issues. Banner deserves a rage vacation. Number six is the Black Panther, who brought some serious payback down on Doctor Doom before practicing tough love on the people of Wakanda by destroying the world's vibranium. He ended the year in Hell's Kitchen, African royalty posing as the owner of a diner while taking over for Daredevil as the neighborhood's new protector. It's as if coming to America was an action movie. Awesome! Number five is Spider-Man, who deserves a round of applause for still being alive, much less defeating all the villains who came after him this year. Yes, Spidey's entire rogues gallery got extreme makeovers courtesy of the Craven family, who culled the Spider family like never before. On top of that, Spidey still found time to honor his commitments to multiple Avengers teams. I hope he's on some kind of frequent webbing rewards program. Number four is Cyclops, who's been channeling Patton as the leader of the X-Men. While Professor Xavier fought for a dream, Cyclops is fighting a war. Both Bastion and Zerus lay siege to Utopia this year, and master strategist Cyclops was able to repel and defeat both of them. Cyclops knows that sometimes to do the right thing for mutant kind, you have to do the wrong thing. But it's a slippery slope, and based on images from the upcoming Fear Itself event, perhaps Cyclops will be on the top 10 villains list next year. Number 3 is Hope Summers. While there's only one woman on this list, at least she's dominating it, just like she did Bastion. We waited three years for the mutant messiah's powers to manifest, and when they did, boy were we treated to a show. She's also the catalyst for the Five Lights, bringing the mutant race back online. But what's with all the phoenix imagery? We're all waiting for the other shoe to drop. Number two is Hercules, who fought for both the universe and reality itself this year. Even death doesn't stop this guy. That's right, he died saving the universe from Typhon. Then his little buddy Amadeus Cho took over as the Prince of Power, resurrected Hercules, and gave him back his power, proving they have one of the best bromances in the Marvel Universe. 
Now they're both risking their lives to fight the Chaos King and save reality. And number one is Steve Rogers. Even when he's not Captain America, this guy tops the list. Perhaps partially because of his selflessness and letting Bucky carry on the mantle. Like Hercules, death didn't stop Steve Rogers, and when he came back, he set things right. No more Norman Osborn, no more hero registration, and no more Dark Avengers. Now Rogers is America's top cop, the Yang to Norman Osborn's Ying. But is the Marvel Universe really black and white? We'll see. However, there's no denying that this super soldier equals super hero. And now it's time for Triceristack, my three picks of the comics hitting stands this coming Wednesday, February 2nd. First up is Invincible Iron Man 500.1, written by Matt Fraction with art by Salvador La Roca. This is the first issue in Marvel's new Point One initiative. Each Point One issue features self-contained, brand new stories that not only set the stage for the next year of storylines, but are a great jumping on point for new readers for the great jumping on price of $2.99. Also check out Ultimate Comics Thor No. 4, written by Jonathan Hickman with art by Carlos Pacheco. This thrilling limited series comes to an end, and we finally uncover the mystery of Ultimate Thor's past. And finally, I recommend you pick up Amazing Spider-Man No. 653, written by Dan Slott with art by Stefano Caselli. The Spider Slayer has Spidey up against the ropes, but Spidey isn't too proud to ask for help. That's right, the new Avengers guest star! The neighborhood just got a whole lot friendlier. And last but not least, it's Graphic Debate. This week's question is all about Fantastic Four number 587. Do you think the right character was killed off? Share your thoughts in the comments below and on the Marvel.com message boards, which is also where you have to cast your official vote. And that's this week's The Watcher. To see all the stuff we talked about today, as well as more top 10 lists, check out the links in the YouTube video description or the Marvel.com news story for this episode. I'm Grace Randolph for Marvel, your universe. Marvel, your universe.